Welcome back to the Big Truck Series News Network, where you come for unbiased news that's also uncensored and unfiltered. The story today, three signs Biden will extend the student loan payment pause into 2023. So first of all, what are the facts? Good journalists always present the facts first. They don't uh, give you too much uh, opinion Time is running out for President Joe Biden to decide about extending the current pause on federal student loan payments and interest, which is slated to end on August 31st, 2022. The moratorium on loan payments has already been extended six times, twice by President Donald Trump and four times by Biden. Many experts think Biden will announce another extension potentially through the end of the year or even later. Our outlook assumes the federal student loan payment moratorium will last until January 2023. Anthony Noto, CEO of student loan lender Sophie, told investors in an August 2nd earnings call. The Department of Education has also told student loan services to hold off sending out new billing statements, according to the Wall Street Journal. Here's what you need to know about federal student loan payments, including how long the pause could last, what other benefits it includes, and whether Biden will push for more student debt forgiveness. Okay, so let's go right on down there. As you can see, this page, I'll, li I'll give you the link to this. This page has a loan calculator. This page also tells you the current rates. Fixed APR, 2.15% from Credible. Sophie has a 3.49. Jesus. Fixed APR, 3.49 from Sophie. Ernest has a 3.24. These rates suck. Like, obviously, you want to go to credible, but Jesus Christ. So first of all, when are student loan payments due? Federal student debt repayments have been paused for more than two years, meaning interest hasn't accumulated and collections on defaulted debts have been put on hold. Trump first enacted the pause on student loans in March 2020 and extended it twice to January 2021. Biden has extended the pause four more times since taking office. The Biden administration initially warned that the extension through January 2022 would be the last. But with the Omicron variant, now you see this bullshit right here. You see this? With the Omicron variant, why don't you, you know what, what else? Monkey pox. So there's a very good possibility Oh, yes, you know, well, we've decided as the Biden administration to extend the student loan moratorium due to monkeypox. Biden decided to continue the moratorium until May 1st, 2022. All right, so you got a March 31st letter from Chuck Schumer. I could, Schumer and Warren, so they're basically probably trying to get him to extend it more. But here are the reasons why that they believe here at CNET that the loans might be paused again. Inflation is still a major issue. While the country has turned a corner on the coronavirus pandemic, the White House has repeatedly said decisions about pausing student loans would be driven by what's happening with the economy. As you can see, it says August 10th, grocery prices up 13%. Notice that they don't mention gasoline and oil prices, which are still high. Says excessive inflation has increased prices for almost everything, and most borrowers are likely not in a position to pay off their loans. Lenders were told to hold off contacting borrowers. It says the situation is that we're almost 30 days away from the planned resumption, and the Department of Education has been telling services to hold off on resumption communications for the last few months. Scott Buchanan, executive director of the nonprofit Student Loan Servicing Alliance, told the Wall Street Journal on July 25th, Maybe the department expects that the White House will yet again kick the can down the road. Another extension could woo young voters in the midterm elections. Now, number three is what I've been talking about. Before I even read this, as I've mentioned a hundred times, most of the things that are happening right now are happening because the Democrats are expecting an ass whipping come November. So they can't give you money and basically bribe you into voting for them. So what they're doing is they're making you understand that the Republicans are going to allow it to resume and we're your last best hope to make sure your loan payments don't resume anytime soon. Once they get into office, though, I guarantee you that last moratorium will be the last moratorium because at that point, 
is nothing stopping them from allowing it to expire. See, right now, they're, they're just afraid they're about to lose their jobs come November. But y'all aren't paying attention to that. Y'all worried about Brittany Griner. So anyway, what's next? What about borrowers who are in default? Because there, there are some people who are already in default before the pause. So it says borrowers in default will automatically be giving a fresh start, really. According to a statement from the U.S. Department of Education, their accounts will be returned to good standing and any delinquency will be cured, allowing them to repair their credit and get... Now, by the way, by the way, first of all, take it from me, somebody who's literally rocking the 850 credit score. Take it from me, credit repair don't happen overnight. You're talking about a four to five year process. I'll tell you like this. I graduated college with my graduate bachelor's degree in 2005. My credit score when I graduated was about a 530. I've told this story a couple times because there's three different scores. My credit ranged between 500 and 550. The middle score is about 530. I didn't see... 700s, doing everything that I tell you about doing. I didn't see the 700s until about two to three years later. After that, I didn't get to 850 until August 2020. That's when I hit 850. So I will say it takes between five, possibly 10 years. And that's assuming you pay off all your debts. But you're talking about people who have their debts paused but what the key here that you need to pay attention to is that the government wants their credit to be in good standing. How many times on these videos that I've made did I tell you the reason why they're so desperate to deal with student loans is because these kids are debt strapped. Their debt to income ratios have been ruined by student loans because they've defaulted. Some of them purposefully didn't pay. Or because they took out so much money that their debt to income ratio has literally made it impossible for them to be able to get car loans and home loans. See, one of the things a lot of people don't understand, especially when it comes to investing, the two largest investments that the average American makes are their house and their cars. Now, that's recent. It used to be that we would say house and cars. However, House, cars, and your education. Because when you really think about it, if you're taking a fucking uh, $40,000 of loans every semester or $30,000 of loans every semester, that's kind of like taking out a new car loan every single semester for four years in a row, assuming you graduated on time in the four years that it's supposed to take you. This government, now I, I try to explain this as simply as possible. This government knows that these kids are cash strapped, but they're trying to create new consumers. They want you to go get a car loan. They want you to go get a house loan. Um, listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. Your job as an American citizen is to take on as much debt as you can without capsizing. I'm going to say that again. As far as they're concerned, your job as an American citizen is to take on as much debt as you can without capsizing. You know, like a boat, a boat that gets rained on can start to take on water. If it takes on too much water, it capsizes. It actually like basically sinks. Your job as an American citizen is to take on as much debt as you can take on without capsizing. That $30 trillion of national debt, your job is to take on as much of that as you possibly can without capsizing. See, I could never run for government because I, I, I like telling the truth because this shit is fucking fun. Lying to people is not fun. I like telling the truth. And that's the truth right there. Your job as an American citizen is to be a fucking consumer. Your job is to buy as much shit that on the bottom of it says made in China as possible without capsizing. Your job is to go out there, get that Tesla Model 3. Get that Tesla Model Y. Go get that Cadillac. 
Go get that Mercedes. Go get that BMW. Go get it. Go take out as much debt as you fucking can without capsizing. That's your job. You know what your other debt is to this state? Your debt's to have children. Your little children. Do you have children? I want you to look at your children right now. You know what your children are? Your children are little cash registers. They will work. They will finance the future. Like a Ponzi scheme. Your little children are cash registers. That's what they are. That's what they are. The health of the state is live births. The health of the state is live births. The health of the state is live births. China's got a problem right now. China's got a skyrocketing cost of housing, but they have a really big generational gap problem because China's one-child policy created a situation where the girls were devalued and the boys were kept. Now there's too many males to females. So the males who have money, they leave the country and they go find females in poorer countries. Chinese men are marrying non-Chinese women. And that number is increasing. They don't have a strong group of millennials because they basically killed their millennials off because they didn't have enough millennials generation z for them is also low in number same problems happening with russia the same problems happening with hungary they don't have enough young people and they have an aging population i don't know if y'all can hear me Hungary, you can look this up. Hungary was giving out minivans to women as an incentive to get them to have children. Why would they do that? Because their population is dying. Europe's population is dying. All of that, uh, what is it called? Voting rights and abortion and prophylactic use and birth control. And uh, women's rights and freedom, that shit caught up to Europe. It caught up to them, I will say, damn near faster than it caught up to America. Because, see, the thing about America is we have a lot of immigration. America has a government that understands that right now blacks are falling behind, whites are falling behind. The last census specifically said that the only two groups that are growing are Hispanics and Asians. They're having bigger families. They're marrying younger they're having bigger families. The health of the state is live births. Your job as an American citizen is to have children and to take on as much debt as you can without capsizing. How can we take out that debt? Well, buy your kids an iPhone. Buy your kids an iPad. Go out and buy them a brand new gaming computer. Go out and buy them some really nice clothes that are expensive. Go out and buy them Fortnite and go buy them every single uh, PUBG game that comes out. Go buy them the Pokemon cards. All that stuff's made in China. Buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. But when your kids are too old for that stuff, you know what you're supposed to do? Take out student loans. Take out student loans. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. Do y'all get it? No, I don't think I don't think y'all trying to hear this. Y'all not trying to hear this. Why why am I even trying to explain this? I don't think you understand what you're up against. Will Biden forgive more student debt? Let's see. On the campaign trail, Biden said he'd support legislation canceling a minimum of 10000 It sounds like lately it's going to be a maximum of 10000 because it thinks the Republicans not letting this asshole spend us into the fucking ground. But anyway, Democrat lawmakers would like to see that amount up to $50,000. Now, here's a question. They printed out welfare stimulus checks two years ago. You're feeling... 
what they are lying to you to your face and saying 9% inflation when really it's double that. It's 18% inflation. Go try to buy a used car now. Go try to buy a new car right now. Tell me what the market adjustment is. $30,000? $10,000? $15,000? No. The inflation rate is 18% at least. After all of those stimulus checks, and they saw what the inflation did to us this year. As I told you before, when I booked my tickets, I booked my tickets Black Friday, November. I got those business class tickets to Maldives. Round trip on the plane, not counting the resort, $5,000 round trip. Now, if I had waited until the inflation hit in February or March, that same exact ticket would have been $12,000. That's not an increase of 50%. That's not an increase of 100%. That's more than 100%. More, over $10,000. That's more than 100%. So despite the fact that we've already seen what the stimulus checks did to us in the future, because now we're living it, these idiots want to print out $50,000 worth of student loan forgiveness. You know what? Why don't they just come right out and say, hey, let's cancel the $1.7 or $1.8 trillion? Right? If a, uh, what, uh, well, I mean, why don't they just come out and say that? Why don't they just campaign on canceling out $1.7 trillion? Now, I'm pretty sure most people don't know about the Weimar Republic and why Germany went so far into debt. But basically, they went into debt because they started printing money after World War I. And they caused a reflection, a recession, reflection. They caused a recession. And they, caused the devaluation of their money. It was called the Weimar Republic. Vi starting with a W. If you look it up, W-E-I-M-A-R. I, I think it's an M-A-R. It could, it's in German, so I'd have to look that up too. Bottom line is, if you look up the Weimar Republic, Google will know what you're talking about. Look it up. Find out what inflation does to a society. It basically brings down entire governments if you're not careful. $50,000. Could you imagine? First of all, let me explain it like this. The average student is holding close to $40,000 in student loan debt. If they did $50,000, that would only cancel out the debt for the average student. But some of the stories that you've seen that I've been reading, which is actually a common occurrence, a lot of these career students have been in school since the 80s. A lot of them have gone to medical school. They have over $300,000 of debt. Some of them approaching $1 million, Some of them exceeding $1 million. Lawyers, too. The average one of these lawyers that went to school, $100,000 in debt, at least. Y'all know what I Y'all know, know these bills. Y'all see it every day because now they're talking about it every single day. Here's a question. They know $10,000 ain't going to do shit. But if the average person is carrying around... $40,000, $50,000 might help them, but all it's going to do is put the rest of us on the hook for the next 20 to 30 years of inflation. Y'all ain't trying to hear this. Y'all don't care. Y'all ain't trying to hear this shit. Y'all ain't trying to hear this. Let me hurry this up. It says Republicans in Congress have argued the president doesn't have the authority. Thank you. Thank you for all of these morons that I got to keep arguing with. On the manosphere who is so fucking dumb that they don't know civics. I've constantly talked about the role of the three branches. The presidency does not have the power to cancel out the debt. The Congress has the power of the purse. But y'all don't know that. These are the same motherfuckers who were smoking weed, skipping class, hanging on staircases. Why am I even bothering? Why do I bother? These are some dumb... Why do I bother? Why do I bother? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, but there are signs the White House sees it differently. Following the Department of Education's revamp on its public service loan forgiveness program in October 2021, more than 750,000 borrowers have had their loans extinguished. 750,000 borrowers, totaling more than $18.5 billion as of May 2022. In 2019, Harvard's Law School Project on Predatory Student Lending filed suit against then-Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos, really, claiming her office had stalled applications for the borrower defense to repayment program. 
Um, the Biden administration in July agreed with the plaintiff's argument. Obvi <laughs> yeah, obviously. Um, Forbes reported this month a federal judge granted preliminary approval to a settlement that would give some 200,000 defrauded borrowers about around $6 billion in their debt relief. Well, first of all, when you're talking about fraud, that's a totally different situation. See, the average, I want you all to understand something. What they try to do is they try to lump different things in together. There are people who went to institutions that were either unaccredited or they were giving out bullshit degrees. Those people definitely were defrauded. Those people kind of deserve to have their loans repaid or their debt canceled. However, those aren't the people we're talking about. We're really talking about the average kid, C student, D student, F student, that goes to college, walks in the door, applies for a loan, signs on the promissory note, and ends up over $100,000 in debt. And probably drops out of school. I, uh, there's a statistic that I've seen that women right now hold more than two-thirds of the student loan debt. So obviously the special interest group that you're watching out for right now is females. Women want you to pay for it. Hey, men of the manosphere. What are y'all doing politically about the fact that the women hold two-thirds of the student loan debt? And now they want you on the hook for it. They want you on the hook for it the same way they want you on the hook for these babies, whether they're yours genetically or not. I believe there was a new law that's either uh, in process or been passed. And they're talking about uh, fathers who don't live with the mothers and aren't married to the mothers need to do a DNA test in order to show that they are actually the father before they're forced onto the child support rolls or sign that birth certificate? Yeah, well, guess what? They should have done that years ago. It should have always been like that. First of all, if you have not had the DNA test, you shouldn't be paying. Because for all you know, all she did was have a hot girl summer or a wild night, and that ain't your kid. So I'm all for it. As far as I'm concerned, if it's your kid genetically, yes, you should be on the hook for it, period. If it's not your kid, you shouldn't be on the hook for it. And if you've spent any money, you should be reimbursed by the mother. That's how I feel about it. Vote for me. That's what, I can't run for public office because when they, if they try to hand me some fucking teleprompter and I see bullshit on it, I'm not reading it. I can't run for office. They destroy the 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 uh the machine, the Democrat machine. They destroy me in five minutes. They'd get they would pull up all of my YouTube videos and be like, "Yeah, this motherfucker's crazy. You can't vote for him. Vote for Biden's son Hunter. So Biden's son Hunter's the better candidate. Vote for him instead." Oh yeah, they'd pull up my YouTube videos. I'd be done. So I'll never end up running for public office because they. I'd be done. So I'll just have to be satisfied with being a low level. A uh, guy who retires on a $150,000 pension and I just go overseas and live on a foreign island with some young girl as a wife. Because I'm, I'm marry her so she could serve me the buco juice in wedlock. Because when I have children, I don't want nobody challenging them and be like, hey, those are not your kids. I'd be like, no, 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 those are my kids. Look at them. They're black. But anyway, long story short, it says whatever Biden decides about more student loan forgiveness, borrowers and financial institutions alike are eager to hear it. At an April 28th White House press conference, the president said he'd make a decision on student loan debt forgiveness in the next couple of weeks. So thank you for listening to the Big Truck Series Review News Network here. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it looks bleak. They can't discharge this debt. They've gotten them selves neck deep into war with Russia and China, basically proxy wars. They're terrified of China taking over Taiwan to the point they passed that CHIPS Act and they damn near didn't even try to fight it because they know, they know that they're going to have problems coming in the next couple of years. They know it. And now you've got a population of kids who can't take out loans. you got a population of kids that's strapped with debt and they haven't even become workers yet. And let's say this, even if you cancel out all of their loans, you think they're going to be able to run out and buy a house? Of course not. The housing market is a mess right now. All the houses have pretty much been bought up. 
Any house that hasn't been bought up is being bought up right now while I'm making this video. Any of the ones that haven't been bought up while I'm making this video, well, you could bet that the Chinese investors and the Indian investors, they're planning to buy those up after I'm finished making the video. It looks bleak. It looks like you and your family of kids and your kids' kids are going to be a couple of generations of permanent renters. But me? Oh, no. No, no, no. See, this black man with the 850 credit score, I got completely different plans. Completely different plans. That right there? That's my ceiling fan. And that right there is my television. But forget the television. Those are cheap and those were made in China. But anyway, that's my ceiling fan. You know what the beauty about having a ceiling fan is? I own the roof. You know what the beauty of that is? I own the house. You know what the beauty of that is? I also own the land. So while everybody's running around trying to get loans and shit to buy houses that they can't afford, that you see that right there? That's my ceiling fan. When they talk about being thankful to God, let me tell you something. If somebody asked me right now, what are you thankful to God for? I'm going to say I'm thankful for my ceiling fan. I am thankful for my ceiling fan. I'm not even joking about that. You see that ceiling fan? Look at that motherfucker whir. Look at it go. I got a roof above my head. It's not Shiba Inu. It's not Dogecoin. It's not Bitcoin. I invested in the house and got a ceiling fan out of it. Look at that. Look at that ceiling fan. That is some shit. There's a roof above that ceiling fan. Think about that for a second. While you're, while you're trying to be the government's next debt slave and you're renting on American soil, renting. When I go into some of my friends' houses, or I'm, I'm sorry, my friends' apartments, you got to walk quietly because you might wake up a tenant. You can't make too much noise and talk at the level that I talk because you might wake up somebody in their apartment. In my house, I can yell and talk as loud as I want. I can have a ceiling fan that runs all day. I can go outside the backyard at 10 o'clock at night and start up the grill. No homeowners alliance can say anything. Think about that. When you, when you decide how you want to invest your money, just think about that. Think about whether or not you want to be a renter for the rest of your life, your, the rest of your natural life. Or do you want to have a ceiling fan? You tell me.